Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. This is the third video in the Restoring a Bass Trombone series. Today I hope to get the bell section completed. In the last video I removed the dents in the bell section from the bell flare up to here. And now I'm going to get the rest of the dents out. The next tool I'm going to use is a tapered mandrel for trombones. I'm going to use this one. And this will get the dents out from about here to here. There are not that many dents between here and here, so it should not take that long to do this. And I have the mandrel in the vise ready to take out some dents. I'm holding the bell with one hand. With the other hand, I'm pushing down on the instrument, so I have to find where the mandrel is. Okay, it's right there, and I'm getting that dent out. Okay, that dent is out. Now the next one. The angle that I push dents out changes. If it's a smooth dent, or one that's kind of curved, I'm going to hold the trombone flat against the mandrel. If it's more of a sharp dent, more of a V-shape, I'm going to go at a little more of an angle. All of that I control with this hand, while the other hand is pushing down on the dents. Now I have to find the mandrel. There it is. Okay, there was a little dent. So I'm just going to work my way up and down the bell. I'm looking for dents, and I don't see any more over there, so I'm going to work my way farther down the bell. And these dents are, are quite easy to do, at least if you've done a lot of dents. When you get started with dent work, it's hard to know what, how hard to push on the dents, but once you do it for a while, you get a feel for it, and it becomes a lot easier. Okay, there's a flat spot here. So I'm going to push that up. Okay, that's good. Okay, well the mandrel has made it about to here, and now it's larger than the bore size of the trombone. So I'm going to have to switch out the mandrels to a smaller one. This mandrel will get the rest of the dents on the straight section of the bell. That's where the end of the mandrel is, so look on your screen and make a mental note of where the end of the mandrel is, and it's going to stay the same place as I remove these dents. And there are only a few dents in here. There's one there, one there. So I'm going to push those out. Okay, there goes that one, there goes that one, and there's also a little flat spot. Let's see, I'm going to look for any more. Okay, there's one right there. Okay, that one is out. You keep finding more dents when you do this. There are always more. I'm done up to where the ferrule is. This mandrel can reach up to where it starts to curve, and you have to be very careful on the curved part because the tapered mandrels can push the metal up and make a little crease coming up, and you want to avoid that. So I'm only going to get up to about here, and I don't think there are a lot of dents. Let's see. There is a little... Okay, there's a flat spot there. Another flat spot there. And when I say a flat spot, I mean a place where it's not exactly a dent, but it's kind of pushed in and it made the metal flat over an area. And uh, those are out. Okay, here's one little dent. When you get closer to the end, let's see, I have to find where the mandrel is. There it is. When you get closer to the end, the dents get harder to get out too because you have less leverage. But there are not a lot of dents there. Okay, I think I am done with the tapered mandrels. I'm done with the tapered mandrels. The tapered mandrels get you from about here to here with the tubing. I'm going to do the curved part later. Now I'm going to do this section. I have some threaded mandrels that you put dent balls on, and they will do a really good job in this area, but th I'm not sure if they're going to be able to reach this or not. I think they probably will not be able to reach this section. If they do not reach this section, I'm going to do those dents when I do this crook. 
In this section, the only dents are in the knuckle right here, and these are called knuckles. Knuckles are the small tubing that come out of a valve, and that metal is always very soft. Usually it's fairly thin, and also because it's been hard soldered onto the valve, it anneals it, which also makes it soft. So those dents are almost always very easy to do. And if you don't poke a hole into the metal, then usually you can do those in just a few seconds. Here's my set of threaded dent balls, and those screw onto the end of a threaded mandrel. And I think I'm going to use this size here. And these have different size of threadings, which go on different sets of mandrels. So I'm going to use that to get the dents out of this section. Change of plans, I put the smaller dent ball on because the one did not work. So I'm going to push those dents out there. There they go. Some of the easiest dents to do. The only thing you have to be careful of is not to damage the inside of the rotor. On the other side there are a few more dents. I'm going to turn the trombone around and get those dents out. Okay, there goes one. Yeah, you have to push a little hard on these ones. Usually, you don't have to do that. This is my set of knuckle dent rods and they are used to get dents out of the knuckles of instruments and these are usually used on trumpet. They do make a larger size for baritone but this is kind of in between and they do not make them for trombones because usually they do not have valves on them. So I'm going to use the trumpet set on this and that should work well to get these dents out in here. The reason I'm using the knuckle dent rod instead of the straight mandrel to get in here is that it will not go past the valve. So I'm going to have to do this section while I do the crook section. For the knuckle dent rods, I'm going to use, let's see, this dent ball. And then I'm going to screw that onto the dent rod. And on these dents, you have to go through the port on the valve casing. You have to be careful not to damage the port. You use your hand as the fulcrum that the dent rod moves around. You do not use the casing as the fulcrum. And then I have to get my hands set up. Okay. Now this might be a little trickier here. I have to find the dent and get under it. Okay, there it is. And then I'm going to push the dent out. And I'm using my thumb as the fulcrum. I am pushing very hard on this with my thumb. Okay, and then there's one more dent up at the top. This one's going to have a little harder time reaching it. Okay, there it is. It reached, but just barely. Okay, anything else? I think that is good for this knuckle. I have another tool that will get these dents out. There is one more dent right there. That dent is going to be very hard to get to because there's a lot of tubing here. So it's going to be hard to go this way. Actually, I will not be able to go this way with a dent ball. So I'm going to have to go through the casing and, and in that way with a dent ball. Since I'm going past the ferrule and this tubing is cylindrical and not tapered, I will not be able to fit the correct size dent ball in there. The dent ball is going to be considerably smaller than that dent. So I'm going to be able to get that dent out a little bit, but it will not be very much. But other than that dent, I should be able to do the rest with the tools I have, and it should turn out well. I just thought of something that may work. This is the larger size knuckle dent rod that I was telling you about. And I'm going to try that. I'm going to get the smallest dent ball. And I'm going to put that on there. I'm not sure if this tool is going to be able to reach in far enough. And if it does, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it without damaging this. So I have to check and see if this is going to work. Let's see, I'll put that in there. It's not made for this, but it might work. Okay, the rod does fit. Now I have to see if the dent ball will reach the dent. So to do that, I'm going to get the magnet. Okay, I think it does reach the dent. Looks like it goes past it a little bit. Oh, look at that. It goes all the way up to there. So I can reach the dent. Now I have to see if I can do it without damaging anything else.
Another thing I could do is unsolder this piece of tubing, but that requires five, six solder joints. These would not be easy solder joints to take apart either, so it would be very difficult to get that one dent out. So I'm going to get it out as far as I can without taking the instrument apart. I'm going to carefully put this in there. I don't want to do damage. Okay, let's see. I'm going to get my magnet to make sure I'm in the right place too. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to try to push the dent out. The dent is right there. Now watch to see it come out, if it does come out. And I'll also see if I can do it without doing any further damage to anything. Let's see. Kind of lost the dent. Okay, I'm going to use the magnet again. Okay, there, I think I'm right underneath the dent now. Okay, come on out, you little dent. Sometimes you need to talk to the dents. Let's see, there it is. Come on. And this is a very sharp dent too. And this tubing is probably a little harder than the other tubing. This trombone was made by Olds and Olds generally has very hard tubing. So it might be a little difficult to get out. But I am going to try. I'm not abandoning the effort yet. Okay. It, it is coming out a little bit. There, oh, there. Came out a lot. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take that off. Uh, yeah, the mandrel did twist a little bit while I was doing that because of the force on it. Okay, the dent is mo the dent is most of the way out. It's better than it would be if I were to go in with a dent ball. It's still not perfect, obviously. It's pretty good. I, I'm going to straighten out the mandrel and then do it one more time. I'm going to try to finish that dent up as good as I can. Okay, you know what? I think I'm going to stop there. I probably will just do damage if I keep going. So I'm going to be content with it the way that it is. Now I need to work on the dents from here to here. I know that all of you are saying, how are you going to get the dents out around this corner here? This setup is very unusual because almost all trombones have a tuning slide that you can pull out like this one. And the way you get dents out of there is with this tool. This tool is called a dent ball driver and it's made for trombone slides because these crooks always get dents in them. So what you do is you put in a dent ball and here is my set of dent balls. And these go up in five thousandths of an inch increments from one quarter inch to three quarters of an inch. And you use this tool to push these dent balls through here to get the dents out. And then you push them the other way to get remove the dent ball. This trombone, since it does not have a tuning slide, at least not in the bell section, the tuning slide is on the hand slide. Because this system is so uncommon, they do not make a tool to do this. So I'm going to improvise and use a French horn tool to get in this area. Here's the tool that I'm going to use. And it looks like a whip, but it's not. It gets dents out of French horns. And it can go around the tubing and into fairly small spots on the French horn and get the dents out. There are different sections in here and it comes apart. You can take the different sections off and use only as much of the length as you need to get those dents out. So I'm going to use this tool, which is usually used for French horn, to get the dents out on this bell. Now I'm going to set this tool up. I'm not sure how far this goes in the bell section. Let's see, it goes up to about here. So that takes us through there. Also, since the flare of the tubing is different than a French horn, I'm not going to be able to set this up like a French horn would be set up. I'll use this section. Right there. Then I'm going to have to go a little smaller, so I'll probably leave out a section. 
As I get the dents done farther down the tubing, I'm going to pull the sections off that are not needed anymore. These are the sections I'm going to need right here. So I'm going to put those together. And then there's one last little section, and this is the one that holds the dent balls. So this is ready to go. Now I just need to figure out what size of dent ball to use. Let's see here. I'm going to start with this one. You put the dent ball on by removing that and putting it on and then you put this piece back on and that keeps the dent ball from coming off inside of here. If it does come loose when it's in there then, well, you have another problem on your hands. So you try to avoid that. So let's see how this works. I'm not sure it's going to be the right size. It might be too small or it might be too large. I'm not sure. Okay, and I'm going to use the magnet to see where the dent ball is. Oh, well I can, I don't even need a magnet for that. I can see it is coming out right there. See that? It's coming right out of the rotor. So I guess this dent ball is a little too small. I'm going to go up, oh, maybe three or four sizes on that. I'm going to pull out the tool. And then take off this dent ball and move up. I'm going to go up four sizes. And then I will see how that one works. Okay, let's see. I can see part of the dent tool coming out, but I don't know exactly where the dent... Okay, the dent ball made it up to where the ferrule is. Uh, the first dent is about right here, so I'm just going to go up maybe two sizes this time, and that should start pushing out some of the dents. There's a smooth dent right here. It's fairly large, and the dent balls do very well on those smooth dents. I'm going to move up two sizes. That should start to get the dent out. Then I'm going to move up in size one dent ball at a time until I get past this dent, and then I'll see what I need to do after that. So I'm going to pull this out, and then switch the dent ball. Okay. This job takes a while because you have to screw and unscrew the dent balls, and as you can see, I'm probably going to have to use maybe 25 to 30, maybe even more, different sizes of dent balls. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to be pulling off the sections that are not needed once, once I work my way up the instrument. So it is quite a job, but it's what you need to do. And also it's kind of a fun job too, because it's fun to see the dents come out of instruments. Okay. This dent ball did go past the dents, but as it went past, it pushed the dents out just a little bit. So I got the right size of dent ball. Now I'm going to move up one more size. And that will that will keep pushing that will keep pushing the dent up just a little bit at a time. And then before I know it, I'll be done with this job. So I'm going to I'm going to put this in again. Okay, I think, yep, the, it's, this dent is coming out a little more each time. This French horn dent removal tool is a very good tool, and if you're going to do a lot of French horn work, I definitely recommend that you get one of these, but most people cannot justify the expense. These are very expensive, but if you are going to do a lot of French horn work, I strongly recommend this tool. And in this case, it works on trombones. I also occasionally use this tool for things other than French horns, as I'm doing right now, but usually I just use it on French horns. Okay, now it, now the dent ball is stopped on the dent, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap down the high spots with a rawhide mallet. When there's a dent on tubing, it pushes down in one spot, but then it pushes out on two spots next to it. So what I'm doing is I'm tapping down the two high spots to push those in, and that should help to push the dent up in the middle. So that's what I'm doing now. Now we'll see if that goes through. 
Well, there it goes. Usually when I'm using this tool, I'm also using a mallet and sometimes dent hammers and a few other tools to work the dents out. And like I always say, you just do what you need to do to get the job done. You don't always do everything exactly the way that they say to do it. And that's because every instrument is different. There are always minor differences when you're doing things, a, a shape of a dent, where a dent's located, the hardness of the metal, and several other factors can change. So, so you cannot really say exactly how to get any dent out until you see the dent. Okay, it's stopped in the same spot again, so I'm going to push and see if it goes through. Yeah, there it goes. This dent ball goes up to here on the tubing, so every time I increase the size of the dent ball, the dent ball is going to go in not as far and it's going to work its way up. Push the dents out as it goes. That's going to keep opening up the tubing and rounding it out. So I'm just going to keep doing that for a while. I'm not going to make you watch me do all of that because, well, it's kind of interesting to do it, but to watch it, not quite as interesting if you watch me do this for, oh, probably 45 minutes. So I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll show you what it looks like in a little while. I'm done removing the dents in this section and I'll show you what I did. Uh, I went to these dent balls. These are the same size as these ones, but there are twice as many and they are in half steps. So two and a half thousandths of an inch increments instead of five thousandths. That's because these dent balls were going up in size too fast and I needed the other ones. So I took those out and it took longer but the job got done better I think. And then when I ran out of sizes I had to move up to the next size of dent balls. And I used a few of those. Here are the sections of the French horn dent removal tool that I took off when I did not need them anymore. And this is what I was left with. And you can also see my hands. They are quite dirty from all the work that I did on it. I'm going to go wash my hands and get back to work. Here's what the crook looks like. And the dents are not out all the way. It's pretty good, but not perfect. And once a dent is in an instrument, it will never be perfect because the metal stretches and also the lacquer cracks. You can see there is a lot of lacquer wear there. The lacquer is also worn because it's on an exposed portion of the instrument. And the instrument is probably 50 or so years old. So it is worn from age and also from the dents. And also I could tell that it, the dents have been removed in this in the past. Whoever did the work on this in the past did a very good job. And unless you get really close, you can't tell that there were dents removed in the past. But when dents are removed and then dents are put back in and then removed again, that also makes it harder to get dents out well. More times dents are removed, the harder it is to do a good job at them. As I already mentioned a few times, the dents could be better on this spell section. So I'm going to clean them up a little bit with these dent hammers. This is my set of five dent hammers. There's a little one usually used on trombone slides and trumpets and a few other things. Then there's a little bit larger one usually used on the middle brass and then a larger one for tubas and these they are interchangeable you can use them for different things and you don't always use the same dent hammer on the same instrument you actually switch them around quite a bit this one has two different heads a smaller one and a larger one and then this one has is a larger version of that one I'm going to try to smooth some of these dents out with the dent hammers for a little while I'm going to use these dent hammers to smooth out some of the high spots in the dents What I'm doing is I'm going through and looking for any place that has a high spot in it and then I'm tapping that down. And that helps to smooth the dents out a little bit more. I'm going to move to a larger one for the bell section. One of the slides was missing a draw knob, so I'm soldering that on now. I want to make sure that I get this done today though, so I'm going to try to keep moving quickly and at least get the bell section done. Obviously the slide section will not be done. Now I'm going to put the slides in 
And that's an easy job. Well, it will be easy if they go well. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Sometimes they don't go in that well, but usually they're fine. Okay, slides are done. Now the valves. Rotor valves get two types of oil. There's a thick oil, you can use key oil or motor oil, and then there's the thinner stuff, it's more like valve oil, and that is for the faces of the valve. And put that in there, <clears throat> and I'm going to spin it around, see if it works. Seems to work with no problem, so that is good. Now the next one, the same thing, the thicker oil on the spindles and then the thinner rotor oil on the valve face. Let's see if that one works well too. I did a little work on the knuckles right there. So, oh yeah, I must have hit something when I did the knuckles. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to take care of that. Obviously I did a little damage while I was working on the knuckles. I tried to avoid that, but it happened anyway. So I'm going to clean up the oil so that I can see what is going on better. Let's see here. Where? Okay, I think it's right there. Okay. Yes, I did. I did make a little mistake when I was getting a dent out over there. I did hit the casing a little bit and it pushed some metal into it. There's a little burr. I'm just going to burnish that back into place. It should not be that bad. I don't think it did any permanent or serious damage, but it did push a little piece of metal in. So I'm going to try to burnish that back into place without doing any more damage. Okay, let's see what we have now. Still a problem, so I'm going to look again and see what I have and then see if I can fix that. I got it fixed and working again. Sometimes even when you're careful, bad things can happen, but thankfully usually they're not that hard to solve. So I'm going to keep going here. If you remember when I took this apart, it had this unusual spring system and I'm going to put that together. One of the little slots goes in one of the holes. Now I need to put on the rotor plate, so I'm going to put some more oil on this. And then on this spindle. I put some on the other spindle, but you have to do it on both. Let's see. Now I need to put the spring in one of those holes. So I'm going to line it up with the middle hole. Let's see. Yeah, did I get that in there? Mm, yeah, I think I did because look at that, spinning around with it. Okay, now I'm going to tap that into place. There are two marks, one on the rotor plate and one on the rotor casing. And I have to line those up. And then when they're lined up, I'm going to get this little tool and the rawhide mallet and tap this into place. And let's see that works. It does have the spring in it, so it is trying to spring back into place. When I when I turn it, it lets go and springs back into place. So uh, it does seem to work though. I'm going to do the same thing with the other valve. Then I'm going to put some oil on there. And then the rotor plate. And I need to line it up. Right there. Tap it in. And then check how it works. Seems to work. And then these caps protect the rotors. So I'll put those on. And these have the unusual system here. These valves have the unusual system with the O-ring that goes right there, but one of them was broken, so someone suggested that I go to a car parts store and buy some O-rings, and I'm going to try the hardware store first and see if they have that. So I'm going to head to the hardware store and I'll be right back. I got the little O-ring at the hardware store. I'll put that on there, and then I need to put this on. 
think it needs to turn this direction. Wait, is that the right way? Let's see if it pushes. On. Wait, is this the right one? You know what? I think this might be the wrong one. I'm going to pop that off. Yep, that's the wrong one. No wonder why it didn't work. Okay, let's try that again. I'll put that on there. Turn it this way. Okay, I think that's good. This goes in here. We got these on. Now I just need to put this in there. And then the bell section will be all done. This is exciting. I get half of the trombone done. Well, I get one of the two portions of the trombone done, but I'll tell you this, it will not be half done by the amount of work. The slide section is going to be far more work than the bell section. Let's see how this works. Let's see. It's not working. That's hitting this. So I'm going to have to bend that a little bit. These two levers are running into each other, so I'm going to move the levers over a little bit. And it's still a little stiff. Well, I have to figure that out, then I'll be done with the bell section. It's a little tight. I'm going to loosen this screw. Okay, that did not help. Okay, so that screw is probably not the problem. I'm going to loosen this one. Okay, well it works now. So the problem has something to do with that screw. I just replaced that screw because the other one was broken. So I think what happened is this screw is clamping down on this. So what I'm going to do is file that down a little bit, then it should work okay. I filed down the bottom of that little piece a little bit. Let's see if it works now. Okay, let's see how it is. Okay, I think I got it. I think we're done. This is a little noisy, and that's because there's a lot of metal against metal moving, so I'm going to put some oil on there, and that should quiet it down. That's better. The bell section is finished. Next week, I'm going to start working on this poor slide that was damaged very badly. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos and look in the description below for links to related videos.